Greetings, greetings in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. This is Thy Kingdom Come Ministries coming with another good message. Some of this good news. Man, ain't it so good to know that the Bible is good news? <laughs> This is the good news, man. I don't know about nobody else. Your spirit has to confirm that this is the good news. Even if you step on your toes, this is still some good news. Because this news is good. There's way more benefits into it if you're trying to live right and trying to do right and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior than it is any condemn type condemnation in there. Uh, it only condemns those that don't know him. Everybody else is saved. It is the, well, the preaching of the cross is foolishness, as the Bible says, to those that perish. But to us that are saved, oh my God, it is the salvation of our souls. My God. It is the power to save all, every fiber of our being. And it's so good to know. Hey, I'm with Nine Kingdom Come Ministries once again. My name is Prophet James Stell. And uh, I have a word for you today. And I believe it's a word of encouragement. Uh, it's a word sent from this vessel right here that God has appointed at this time, day and time, to the nations and different tongues and different languages and different people, kindreds and families, even those that are not, that need to come into the fold. But this word right here is a word of most definitely encouragement for such a time as this. Uh, it's very important. It's vital. I believe this word right here is a resurrection word to be able to resurrect and with power and demonstration to be able to let you know that you are not defeated. You can get back up. And the title of this sermon is called Instructions for Getting Back in the Game. Instructions for Getting Back in the Game. And the reason I say that is, is that... Uh, there, when, when, when the person has, let's say, made mistakes, what they call mistakes that God has already covered, and they might be still holding on to it, that there is, uh, the, the, remember I always tell you that the greatest enemy is the enemy that's within. And even though you're trying to have the mind of Christ, Paul was an apostle of Christ, apostle of the Most High God, wrote three-fourths of the uh, of New Testament to, to set our souls free. Through the election of the Holy Spirit. And even he had issues with uh, thorns being in his flesh. He trying to walk the walk. He's trying to do it. And uh, he's committed. He's righteous. He knows Jesus is Lord. But there's still obstacles and stuff that came coming his way. And so even with this man being this full of Jesus and full of him and him on the side and inside him. He even had, there's always going to be a struggle for, because we are not of this world. That's why we are not of this world. We are not of this world. And some people, somebody needs to know right now and be reminded that you are not of this world. Your heavenly home is totally on a whole nother level, another playing field, another plane that we go on. And what we just here for an appointed time and temporary. And I just wanted to read this word to you. Let's pray for us. Father, Father God, in the name of Jesus, let thine will be done, God. Dear Father, on this earth and inside this verse, earthen vessel and other earthen vessels that's going to be hearing this word, hearing this word, as it is on this earth, as it is in heaven. So give us this day, God, this daily bread, God, that you bless us with to hear, dear Father. And forgive us our sins and our trespasses, the them that trespass against us, God. Father, we need your forgiveness. Other people need our forgiveness. We forgive other people, God. God, even though, you you know, sometimes forgiveness is a process, but God, you said as long as we do it and act on it, God, that we would be covered because you told us to forgive and let it go in the name of Jesus. Forgive us our sins and our trespasses. We forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and most definitely you deserve all the glory, honor, and all the praise. And you're going to get it anyway, God, whether we like it or not, or whether the world likes it or not, because you are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords. So we bless your name today, God, and we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now let not hide me behind the cross and let this flesh be used right now for such a point in time as this, God, to bless somebody else out there that need this word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, 
Go to the book of John, chapter 21, starting at verse 3. Now the setting of this, the, the setting of this whole thing is Jesus has already been crucified. He's already been taken down from the cross. He's already resurrected. But before he left, he had disciples that was with him. He had 70 the first time. Downsized and it came down to 12. He had 12 of them. And they followed him all the way, even though they followed him, some of them, but a lot, all of them, that's what I say, all of them left him to bear his cross alone. So at that point right there, he dies. He resurrected. And so now, we are sitting right now where all the disciples are going back trying to live their life as normal. And going back, not, you know, not even in the endued power that they have that God gave them. And some of them, I don't know that's the explanation. You can read, well, as we read through the text, you can see some of them had guilt, uh, especially Peter. But right now, let's go to that scripture. Verse 3 says, Simon Peter said, I am going fishing. <laughs> I'm going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. Coming from the New King James Version. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that, and that night they caught nothing. <laughs> caught nothing. So G. Peter then already denied Christ. Then, then, then tripped and fell and hit his head again and he had a point right now where he said you know what I'm just going back to doing what I used to do I'm going back fishing that what Jesus found me was when I was fishing Jesus found him while he was, they were out fishing but guess what ain't this funny that at the end when Peter at the part where Peter thought that he was at the end of his ministry uh, <laughs> this is the same setting that Christ finds him again <laughs> praise the Lord so it says they went out and immediately got into the boat. So they went, went, went back into the boat. And at night, they went fishing at night. And they didn't catch nothing. Because sometime in ministry, you got to be able to understand that we have to be led by the Holy Spirit in the ministry. You know, there ain't no sometime all the time. You have to be led by Him. And sometimes that's a faith walk. And at times, you might feel like that you're not going to catch nothing. <laughs> Even back in the day when you was in ministry, because this word is for somebody that have been in ministry and that has feel like they're not worthy or don't deserve to pick up that mantle again and preach. But let me tell you something, yo, this is your second win. Holy Spirit is telling, tell, telling me to tell you it is your second win right now <laughs> because you never lose when you're in Christ because Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together to good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So there is no loss in you. Only thing you lose is to gain on the other end. You might as well say loss is the numerator and gain is the denominator. And the denominator is going to outweigh is what carry the numerator. Thank you, Jesus. So guess what he says? So, but when the morning had now come, Jesus stood... <laughs> On the shore. Bible said in the book of uh, Psalm, it said, Weeping may endure for a night. Psalms 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night. In the nighttime, it might be weeping. I'm sure these, 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 these disciples was weeping right about now because of the simple fact that they went out all night toiling, trying to get fish, and didn't catch nothing. So, no, they were not happy in the best of spirits. But it said, But now we're in the morning time. He said, but when the morning had now come, somebody needs to say now. Now is your morning time. I feel you, Holy Spirit. Uh, now is. Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. They didn't even know it was him. But Jesus was on the shore in the morning. When it's time Jesus is in your life, that is the morning. You ain't got to worry about the sunset and the dawn and the darkness. Any darkness come on you, he is the S-O-N that brings the S-U-N into your life. And you shine brighter than the sun. It says that, then Jesus had said to them, children, have you any food? Now Jesus knowing all things. Jesus always asked the question, 
God even asked the question. That's the character that they always ask the question knowing the answer. They want to see how much integrity they want to see what your will is going to line up and say. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. It says, children, you have you any food? They answer them, no. No. I bet they like try to think to themselves, who is this man over here asking if we got in the booth? Because it said in the scripture, they didn't know who he was. So they're like, well, who is this cat over here? But they, they just they answered him anyway. And he answered it. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat. And I can guarantee you this right here. I, in ministry, God's grace covers so much. Because all we do is supposed to spill, send the word out and spill it. And God is the one to get the increase and get that word. So, also, his, his word does not return unto him void. And so, Paul even says some people preach out of envy and strife. And he said, and there's some that preach out of love. So, yeah, it's different folks that are doing, pre preaching different things. Same message, different motivation. So, right here. <laughs> He said, children, he said, no, he said, casting that on the right side of the boat. See, in the direction of Christ, this time, Christ is showing you now, whoever I'm talking to right now, uh, he's saying that, uh, be under his guidance now before you go back out there. <laughs> Cast your net on the right side. Now, I'm not saying that directly God is telling you the right side, but his right side said, if Christ tell you that that's the side, whether it's the left or the up, down side, upside, down side, if Christ tell you the side the, to throw it on, it is going to be the right side. And God do not want you mi uh, 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 missing out on any blessings that's already due to you because he knew your labor of love. He knew you were serious when you got in this thing. <laughs> he knew you had fire, but the fire messed around and got burnt out. So he's trying to tell me to tell you right now that let him lead. And it's going to be a faith walk. It's going. He said without faith it's impossible to please him. It is going to be a faith walk in order to put your trust back into the man because you done put a whole lot of stuff on top of you done put a lot of topsoil on top of the ministry. There's a lot of cares of the world that is on top of your ministry right now. But Jesus is saying it's morning time and it's time for you to get back into the game. These are instructions for you to get back into the game. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. He prophesied to him. So look, I, look, I want to sh show you something. <laughs> a man by the name of Jesus, who they didn't even know yet, is over there prophesying to them. So in this season, it may be somebody that's going to come in your life that you don't even know, but it is Jesus. And when he comes into your life, telling you instructions, but you'll know because you're weighing out these things that are through the spirit. And, you go, you, and you'll see the fruit, the love, the peace, the, the kindness, the, 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 the faith, the long suffering is going to be in the voice of the person that's giving these instructions. It ain't going to be no tax master for the ministry's sake. It's going to be a, a, a labor of love for Christ's sake. My God. Boy, it's a difference. People that have been in ministry for a minute will tell you it is a difference. And you and you have already been through what you went through. All the fires that you went through. It's for such a time as this right now. And God has been burnt this on my spirit to, to give to you today. Because I've been, been kind of holding back on it. Saying, well, go with me. Wait, God. Let me, uh, 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 let me go ahead and kind of. I don't know if this is the right time. I'm kind of second guessing myself about the word right now. To profess and claim this word. And all this here. But God is saying, no, I'm directing it right now. And if I tell you this is the right side, James, to cast it on right now. My goodness. So that right now, I'm casting mine on the right side with him leading and him for him to win, me following. So he said, cast the net. And I will, you will find some. So they cast. So they did it. Faith. G. Christ already spoke to faith. And he said, and down now here come to work. <laughs> They cast, still not knowing who the man is, and now they were not able to draw it in because of a multitude of fish. <laughs> the exact same way that they had it the very first time that they met Jesus, and here it is again. So what Christ is saying is, baby, the game ain't changed. It's just the faces that didn't change. <laughs> Only thing changing is the weather because Christ said, I change not. He is the God of Israel. I change not. <laughs> So he's saying, look, I get back to where you was at right there. Needing me. Needing me. 
not needing your ministry, not needing your favorite song, not needing your CDs, not needing your uh, 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 presence at a certain function or, or to be recognized or recognition. Get back to needing me. My God. Get back to needing me. Yes. I need you, Lord. I can't make it without you, Jesus. I will go crazy without you because you've made such a difference in my life. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, because <laughs> he know that love of Jesus, he knew his master. He knew his man. He knew it. You know, they didn't know who he was, the one that loved Jesus' love. John, he said, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard, when he heard it was the Lord, he did not see. When he heard, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And remember, they all walk with Jesus. But when he heard it, he put out on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged it to the sea. He messed around and got naked and jumped into the sea by faith jumped in that murky water where they were fishing look he got the, they got the fish on the boat was out there didn't understand why they couldn't get nothing Jesus come along they pick up a whole lot of fish just like the first time and guess what the first time it didn't say that Peter jumped out on the boat when they first when they first met him. But this time, G Peter was so desperate and he knew that he needed Christ in his life so bad that he jumped out on that boat butt naked, y'all. <laughs> you know, Job said, Naked did I come into my uh, world and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And blessed be the name of the Lord. He was so excited that his master was there. But look at this here. When he said, when he did that, he jumped on it. He got, he, 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 he when he met, in this time he ran, and he got up there and blew. First he worshiped, first he worshiped him, and then he he come out there butt naked, and that's how Christ wants you this time. He just needs for you to get naked, man. Naked. God, this is my sin. This is what I did. This is the adultery. This is the idolatry. This is the anything that you've done. You know, your spiritual adultery. God is not fooled. He's not stupid. God is he's a witness. He's with you every day. If you saved, he's with you every day. Even if you ain't, he's in you if you saved. But he still, his eyes go to and fro to people that are not even saved. So this right here, he's saying, just get naked before me. <laughs> and that's what he did before Jesus approached him. He got naked. Stripped of it. I'm naked of prejudice. Naked of self-doubt. <laughs> naked of hopelessness. <laughs> naked of, 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 of not believing, having an evil heart of unbelief. Naked of, of, of habits. What is it that you need to get naked before you get to Jesus again. What is it that you need to get naked about yourself? Huh? He already sees and know everything. He just waiting on you to say and come with a repentant heart. Because the Bible says that godly sorrow walking working toward repentance. What is it that you need to get naked about today? What is it that I need to get naked about today? You ain't in this alone. For all of sin and falling short of the glory of God. My God. But he got naked. And then he said, after that he said, but the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, 
but about 200 cubits dragging a net <laughs> with fish. Peter said, I ain't worried about the fish. I got to get to the master. The other disciples dragging the fish, bringing in. So there's twofold ministry right here. The head got to the head of it, got to jump out the, the boat to get to Jesus, and the other disciples had to do some work. <clears throat> they were all working one. One was worshiping at Jesus' feet, and the other one was working with the fish. My God. That's good. That's good right there. So make sure that whatever ministry that you get in this time, that there's a double fold right there, a ministry of self to get to Jesus. And you might be the one that need to get to, you always need to get to Jesus. But then there's sometimes, sometimes you, you need to do the service, get the service out, <laughs> get the serving, but never, but before you do whatever happens in this here, make sure that you naked before Christ. And that's when God can pour out more. He can't pour out a vessel that's not broken and still stopped up with stuff. He said, if you can't, if you can't pour new wine, give you new assignments, new, new, new ideas, <laughs> new things to delve into, if you still got old stuff in there. For the old Bible says that the old, the new wine is going to be important that vessel, I'm paraphrasing, and, the, and it's going to bust and the wine going to go everywhere and not be intended for what it's used for. The new wine, the new instructions, the new thing. So make sure that your, that your, your vessel is naked this time. My God. And all it takes is just a little repentance saying, God, I'm sorry. It helped me work on this here, God. I need, to, I need me, I need me to be new to you, to you. Not the people. I'm not worried about people on this one. I was in ministry before because of people and didn't know that. We and we and you have to admit that. That you didn't mean for it to get that way, but it got that way. But now, here you go your second win, baby. Here it is. My God. And you never know when God gonna come in and instruct you for your second win. You never know it. Because guess what? <laughs> Didn't nobody know that the strongest point of Samson's life was when he uh, when I, I I preached a sermon one time at a church, a church in a little town, and and the title of it was "He's Getting His Hair Back, Y'all," and that was Samson. Samson's hair was growing back even in the midst of trouble, even while everybody was really ridiculing. They didn't even understand that his hair was growing back, which was his strength. They were so busy ridiculing and not understanding. Well, uh, yes, eyes getting put out, but his hair was growing back. And when that hair grew back, which was the uh, signification of the anointing and instruction of God, guess what? He was able to knock the pillars down and kill more Philistines than he did in that one time than any other time because they had no idea that they had his hair was growing back. And so, guess what? In your life, with all your troubles in Romans eight twenty eight, they don't understand that your hair is growing back. My God. Your hair is growing back right now. <laughs> if you're in the middle of the fire, your hair is growing back. And even if you're in the middle of the fire, the fourth man is in the, that's in the furnace is in that furnace with you. So he said he'll never leave you and never forsake you. He will not leave you comfortless. If there's no comfort right there, it's because you left him. It ain't because he left you. He right there. So it says that in verse 8. But the other disciples kept, no, verse 9. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw five coals there and fish laid on it and bread. It was already fish right there, Christ had. He told, he said, he said y'all are fishes out there. What's the name? And Christ came to let them know. I still ain't discounted what I said before of y'all being fishes of men. God never goes back on his word. We go back. We were the ones that renege on his word. He don't. It says, verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. <laughs> Give me some of them that you just caught over there. <laughs> Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish. See, look at that. Peter messed around and helped drag the net. Even though he left his disciples to drag the net because he was trying to get to Jesus' feet, the disciples were so uh, in tune with Peter 
and had so much trust in them. They didn't say, well, man, man, you need Peter, you need to help pull these fish. Because guess what? When he got to the master's feet, his next, uh, his next thing he was going to do was serve. And so he went back over there and helped him. Let me help you. I had to get to Jesus first. But now that I have been converted and strengthened, and after saying this desire to sit me like we, now I can come strengthen and help you. Come on, let's pull these fish over. Jesus saying, let's pull the fish. I'm with you, brother. Just because I'm not with I might have to get away from you for one second. <laughs> I'm still with you. Understand what I'm saying? Because to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And that ain't even just talking about going to heaven, but I'm absent in your presence, and I'm present in his. Guess what? It's all working as a two or threefold, twofold, two to threefold ministry. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Oh, God. So it says, although there were so many, the net was not broken. Because when Jesus tells you to go out and do something and get back out, get it back on your feet and do ministry. Now, remember this here. He hadn't told them to go back out there, told Peter that he was going back out there and do ministry yet. Peter was already doing ministry right here at this whole situation right here with this boat. He was already doing it. He was instructing them. This is instructions on for getting back into the game. You're already in the middle of doing it right now. You probably don't even know it. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said to them, come and eat. Break, break, come and eat breakfast. <laughs> ah, come and eat breakfast. First of the day, breakfast, first meal. Eat with Jesus. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. So they knew. They knew their master's voice. He said, my sheep, hear my voice. That's why it's important to have a personal relationship with Christ. So that you can hear his voice and know his voice. Get to know his voice. You know it. Use it. Use the fruits of the spirit. The Bible will never go against his voice. The word will never go against the voice that you hear in him. It says, Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them and likewise the fish. This, now, this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After he was raised from the dead. So guess what? Now verse 15 starts off of the restoration period. This is a restoration. <laughs> He's seeing this here. All this is going on. And Christ saying, hmm, I see what you're doing. You're helping your brethren. You're doing it. You came out here before me naked. Now let me restore you. Because I see that you're serious about this thing. And you're serious about the call that I have already placed on your life. My God. Remember, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. For the kingdom of God coming not by observation, but lo, the king observation means seeing things. You don't see the kingdom of God because why? The kingdom of God is within you. And then people will see your works and know that you are of the kingdom of God. So when they had eaten breakfast, verse 15, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to you, he said to him, yes, Lord. You know I love you. <laughs> you know I love you. Well. Jesus knew Peter loved him. Peter had to. His issue of struggles with the end. That was a stumbling block right here. Jesus is already ready to restore him. But he's asking them questions. To see what he believed. He said to them, feed my lambs. <laughs> lambs are considered the small, the youngins of the flock. Youth ministry, young. The young followers, the young followers of Christ. Those that just now coming into Christ. The young in spirit, the young in the walk. <laughs> feed the lambs. And he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah. <laughs> and if you notice, he didn't call him. He called him son of Jonah. You know why he called him son of Jonah? Because Jesus was giving him indication that he's checking his flesh. Because in the fleshly, he was a son of Jonah. In the spirit, God had already, Jesus had already been transformed. His name was Peter, which means the rock. So he going back, and, and, and it's, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
God is telling me to tell you right now. He's going to go back into your flesh and check the thing, the area where you left off at. He's going to check and see if you believe because why he's going to do that is because he knows that that's the area that the enemy had planned against you and want to say he succeeded at halting your ministry at halting you from doing all what God called you to do. So he's going to check that area, that flesh area where you got, where you left off at. That's what he's doing to Peter right now. That's why, man, guess what? Even though he's doing that, that's why Jesus said, before he told him, Satan would desire to sit in the system like we, when he told him that, he said, but I have prayed the Father that your faith fail not. So what God and what Jesus is doing right here, thank you, Holy Spirit, boy, thank you for this meeting. And, and, and for somebody to need this, is he, he's going to check your faith. He, he, he checking to see where your faith is at. Is it there to believe and keep moving on? He, so he's going to check that area to see if you're going to allow that to get in your way again. But guess what I just what he did right here? At the second time, he said, the, he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. So these are the older saints, the ones that are seasoned into the ministry. The sheep, they're not just lambs no more. They're not just ewes. <laughs> they, are the, they are sheep. They're full grown. They're maturing or they are mature. He said, so he, he got to feed both of them, young and old. He said to him the third time, ah, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh man, your flesh part of you. Do you love me? Peter was grieved. Why was he grieved? He was grieved because <laughs> he said to him a third time, do you love me? Why was Peter grieved? Because that third time reminded him <laughs> of when he denied him. The third time reminded him of when Christ prophesied to him and said that he was going to do it. <laughs> And Peter, with all his muster and all his brawn and strength, said, no, Lord, that's not going to happen. And he told him, it is going to happen. So guess what? He had to hit him that third time. And Christ is going to have to hit you that third time <laughs> at the very pinnacle point of where you felt like you was disgraced under him. Where you felt like you left him. Where you felt like you failed him. He got to, he going to hit you back right away at that point right there. Because why? That's the area that needs strengthening right now. That's the area that's going to need uh, 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 for you to believe in. That's the area, the hurdle, the mountain that you're going to need to jump on. But guess what? Well, before Peter, before, it ain't going to be nothing hard. Because remember, Jesus had already prayed for Peter when, it, when this time comes. That his faith fell not. So guess what? Christ has already prayed for you. That when this time comes, that your faith fell not. He got to show you what you got in you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So he got to show you. You, my God. He said to him the third time. He, he was grieved. He was happy that very first time. He was happy answering the second time. Gotcha, God. No thing. But that third time took him back. And Jesus was right there to guide him through that. Don't worry. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. And that is the inside point that you need to, to, to uh, 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 need strengthening and knowing that you are going to go through this. God got to show you that you're strong enough to get over that over that obstacle, over that barrier. And he got to show you that. He already know what he put in you. Peter answered and said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Keep on feeding. Even when you feel grieved, when I, if I tell you something, you feel grieved about it. Right here. Keep on feeding. Don't stop feeding the sheep. There's sheep that Jesus said, there are sheep that are not of this fold that I also that I must bring in. There's sheep out there on your job. There's sheep out there in the parking lot. There's sheep at the, at the Alvises. <laughs> 
There's sheep out there, are homeless on the streets, hooked on crack. There's, there's homeless. There's people that 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 that, 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 that live in houses that's about to get mortgages is due. There's people out there that's on drugs. It's teen pregnancy out there. There's suicide. Those are sheep that need to be bought in. And God is calling you to get back on that journey and bring them sheep in because he has placed assignments and he placed people in your path the way you can get that job done. And it's a job that needs to be done because it's the laborers are always few. But guess what? You ain't out the game. These are instructions for getting back into the game, y'all. Jesus' name. So he said, most assuredly say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. And it says in 19, thus this he spoke, signifying by what death he will glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Same way he told him before, follow me. He didn't have nothing to, at the first time. He didn't have nothing to do. So be, don't allow your inside discounts, or inside ostracizations, inside DA evidence, or where you failed Jesus, or where you feel like you failed him, halt you, halt you from getting back in this ministry. This go around in the name of Jesus. Don't do it. So now it says right here. It says, but check this out. Now Peter, one love Peter. Because Peter was so real about this and the way they got his story so transparent. He said, then Peter turning around saw the disciples whom Jesus loved following uh, who also had leaned on his breast after supper and said, Lord, who is he? Who is the one who betrays you? Peter seeing him said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Now this right here, he already got a clothes. You already was ne got naked before God. You already showing that you're in the ministry. God had already showed you this this other stuff that's going on with the, the inside issue of not not feeling worthy of what happened last time. Uh, now we got another pinnacle to cross. Now that was your inside. Now God is showing Peter right here. Now let me deal with your outside right here, my brother. Right here. <laughs> Yeah, see, God, Jesus was so patient with, with his disciples. And that's how he is with us because we his disciples. And we should be out there making disciples. And then Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Let me repeat that one more time. Jesus said to him, because Peter, last thing Peter came out of his mind, he said, what about that made this man over here? What about this other disciple? What about this other brother in Christ? What about this here? He said, man, if, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Quit worrying about other folks. Quit worrying about how they feel about you. Quit worrying about, because guess what? I know, I have, I read through all the scriptures. I hadn't read any scripture where Caiaphas called Jesus Lord. That he changed, even after his death, he was still trying to destroy him. So guess what? The people that tried to destroy you and the people that tried to dismantle you and the people that didn't believe in you, uh, tried to have the, uh, 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 shine, their teeth all shining and shucking and jiving in your face, they probably still not going to like you because you know what? It ain't about them. It's about you and Christ Jesus. That's what so Jesus said. Don't worry about other folks. Don't worry about the opinions of other people. Don't worry about uh, 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 what he already told him is mishaps on the inside, but he's trying to forewarn him about mishaps on the outside. You need to stay in your lane and you need to stay focused. Don't worry about them. I remember penitentiary used to say, yeah, when you when you go when you go to penitentiary or whatnot, you get locked up. When people leave, they don't all they are not making parole together. Everybody has separate numbers. So he said, then saying went out among the brethren that the disciples would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Ooh, these are some good prophetic instructions right here, y'all, about getting back into the game. God has called you to get back into the game. If you know that this message is for you, get back into the game. You really ain't out. You're just sidelined right now, hurt, trying to take the back road, trying to sit back in church and not be seen, trying not to... <laughs> Draw no attention, 
But guess what? You already drawn attention because of who you are in Christ Jesus. That attention is not going to go because the Bible says we are a gazing star. Understand what I'm saying? It's souls written with your name on it to pull out of the depths of hell right now. So, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that these prophetic instructions, dear Father, touch the souls and lives of people that feel like they count themselves out of ministry. People that feel like they didn't understand what was going on. People that, that people misunderstood. I want to tell you this. When you in Christ, you're going to are you going to be a walking epistle, but also a walking, misunderstandable person at that? People are not going to understand you because you ain't even understanding what's going on. You walk by faith, you ain't understanding what's going on. So don't worry about the misunderstandings. You, that's going to be part of your nature of who of your growth in Christ. But the most thing that you're going to be is you're going to be a son of the most high God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm hearing in your spirit right now that you're telling somebody to take up your bed and walk. <laughs> Don't worry, worry about the waiting on them. You've been sitting up here waiting on the water to be stirred for a long time. <laughs> but God say, I want you to stir the gift that's in you. <laughs> you need to stir up the gift that is within you. Quit worrying about stirring up water. Because oh, already, you already got water in you. You already got the living water in you. Stir that gift up and watch God move on your behalf. Man of God, woman of God, stand on your feet and do what you got to do. In the name of Jesus, the, 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 the time redeeming the time for the time is short and we ain't got long here and we need you to be on the battlefield for, for souls because you are already Christ and you do not belong to the world and you will not fit into it. You've been called out to to do the will of the Lord. And God, we thank you and we bless your name. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed because I really feel that somebody's going to hear this word. Boy, and they're going to lay it down. I don't know. This word going all over the world right now. I don't know where. It may be somebody in Japan, maybe in China, maybe in Africa, maybe in South Africa. It might be in Australia. But somebody over this world, over these airways, will hear this word. And they're going to muster up enough strength to lay it down and get back up. This is your instructions for getting back into the game. In the name of Jesus, because you will never count it out in the first place. We love you. Nine Kingdom Come Ministries love you. My name is Prophet James Still, and I'm signing off. I, I, even though I'm here being absent in your presence over these videos, but I'm never absent with you in spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.